Kitsune Tales is both a rom-com and love letter to Super Mario Bros. 3 2D platforming. And while the game has a lot of charm, it kind of stumbles at the finish line when it comes to putting it all together. We play as Yuzu, a Katsumi fox that after her first big assignment to the human world, seems to have developed a crush on the local village healer. But when her childhood friend slash rival decides to also have feelings for her, we are trapped in a classic love triangle. And in order to solve this, we're going to do what we always do, and that is run from left to right and jump a few times here and there. Katsumi Tales, as I said in the singer, is a love letter to Super Mario Bros. 3 design, physics, and kind of movement tech. Right down to your own version of having peace speed that you must build up. The game will have you going through different worlds, each of various themes that will have their own enemies, obstacles, and suits. Similar to that of Super Mario Bros. 3, but far more elaborate here, is that you'll get access to different suits that will change Yuzu's properties. This will allow her to do some actual attacking, change her jump, and other stuff like that. And it really does become a kind of a night and day difference in terms of navigating these levels. I'll come back to that in a few minutes. The game definitely hits all the marks of Super Mario Bros. 3 in terms of kind of the structure and the general enemy design. At the end of each world, you'll have to do battle, or I guess puzzle-ish battle, with a boss. There's also a kind of optional star world for those of you who are really looking to challenge yourself. Now, with that said, my issues with Katsumi Tales is that while it's trying to mirror that of Super Mario Bros. 3, it's also trying to elevate and do things differently than that game. And when kind of these two schools of thought intersect, it leads to some clashes with the general gameplay and level design. So, the first thing is that the game features far more active and aggressive enemies compared to Super Mario Bros. 3. They'll home in on you pretty well, they'll attack very fast, both in terms of charging or throwing projectiles, but you're still dealing with the same kind of slower Mario kind of physics. Like, this is not a game again where you have a immediate run. You have to kind of build a momentum from a starting position. And this makes it very easy to take a hit in a lot of circumstances. There are some sections in this game that I could not see how you actually avoid taking a hit from the enemy, given the aggressiveness and the speed that they're able to chase you down at. I also ran into many different kind of hitbox issues, both in terms of taking damage and avoiding it, and also trying to land on enemies or platforms. Like with the Mario games, you are able to jump off of enemies for increased height, and this is used quite a lot in some of the harder challenges. And there are cases where it felt like I should have hit the enemy, but I didn't. Now, the difficulty of this one is a little bit tricky to go over. It is, despite the charming graphics and music, it is a lot harder than it looks, and a lot of that comes down to the level design. As I said a few minutes ago, you get access to different suits that grant you an additional property or change. And each world in the game is built around kind of one specific suit or theme being the star. In the war world, it's the shark costume. In the kind of like tree air world, it's your, I think you're a pigeon. But the problem is that the level design goes from being kind of interesting to go through with the power to just frustrating as all heck without it. The water world, as an example, features a lot of areas that is just about you navigating the kind of seaweed electrical trap of like the TMNT game. And using the SMB3 physics for swimming is not the best or most accurate way of doing it. And not only that, but it's also very slow. And these levels can be, I wouldn't say they're long, but they're a little bit on the longer-ish side compared to some of the other platformers we've played. And again, this is compounded by the difference between having the correct suit and not having it. And the game features two difficulty settings. 
Their main difference is that on the kind of like old school mode, you can only add suits or use items from the world map, while the kind of casual setting lets you do it from within the level itself. And I would say if you start to feel frustrated about this game, definitely turn on that option. Now, the overall level design also has some very annoying issues in terms of platforming physics and the kind of platform design itself here. So the game commits a very uh, kind of standard trap I've seen 2D designers fall into. And the first one is that your character model is too far on the right hand side of the screen when you're moving. It makes it very hard to kind of dodge oncoming attacks and makes it far more penalized to try and go at full speed. You typically want the character model to be kind of like on like the uh, first quarter on the opposite direction or the halfway point, not at the three quarters position of the screen. And the game features a similar issue during vertical sections, where it doesn't scroll far enough down as you're climbing up. And this can lead to enemy spawns or attacks, just like fleeing themselves onto the screen super fast before you even have a chance to react, and you're gonna take a hit from it. The game also features local timers for enemy attacks or enemy patterns and platforming. And this can also cause some unintentional difficulty if you spawn in a platform or an enemy at the wrong position. And there was one level that definitely felt like this was coming into full play when you're being kind of squeezed by two walls. You have to kind of wait for things to happen. And while these problems aren't completely game killers, it does add unnecessary frustration to a game that again was built on one of the more, I guess, like approachable platformers at that time. So this one comes with a recommendation with some caveats. If you're hoping for an improvement on the design of Super Mario Bros. 3 itself, you're not going to find that here. Everything is again filtered and built around the same physics and gameplay and feel of that game. When the game does introduce some new elements, especially in terms of level and environmental design, it does feel very nice to get through. One level that I did like was when you had the classic, the uh, top screen is kind of the mirror of the bottom, but it's what's actually reflecting what the level is. So you have to look at like invisible blocks on the bottom using the visible mode on the top. And this kind of stuff is really great, but it can be, I think, a little bit of a clash. If you're going to this expecting more of a casual platformer with a love story, rather than having some more difficult platforming, and the story kind of revolves around that. For people who do manage to get through the base game, there is a second campaign that involves you going with another character, who I won't spoil here, going through the entire game once again, but this time having access to different movement and attack abilities, and kind of framing these in a different light, and it does I think a better job of making use of the level design when you're using a different character who behaves at their own rate compared to just being like the stock SMB3 design. So to wrap up our review, Kitsune Tales is a very interesting platformer. Again, do not let the charming graphics and voice acting fool you. This game can get quite challenging. And if you're, again, hoping to see like any of like the rough edges of Super Mario Bros. 3 or 2D platforming solve like our relationship issues here, you're not gonna find that. But if you don't mind that and looking for a very interesting tale, then you should give this one a play. This was played with a press key provided by a developer. Let me tell you, your game of the future does not have to involve platforming, foxes, or romantic uh, problems. Please reach out. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments down below, and see everyone in the next video. Thanks for watching, and a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the video, do the YouTubing stuff. Be sure to visit our Discord and Patreon, and if you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my game design books.